Good morning everybody, big welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a little while since I've spoken to you guys, but I wanted to get my act together, get out here and take you guys on an adventure. And I believe this one's gonna be a pretty good one if you wanna stick with me for it. We're actually gonna be doing a complete tour of the Grampians National Park absolutely stunning national park if you haven't heard of it you really need to you need to put it on your adventure bucket list on your australia travel bucket list and more specifically on your victoria travel itinerary so this one guys that i'm talking about is the grambians national park it's located approximately i'm guessing about two to three hours from melbourne depending where exactly you're coming from but it's um, a relatively big national park and it's located in inland western victoria it's got a whole heap of um, rock climbing, hiking, lookouts, waterfalls even. There's a whole lot that has to offer. So to give you a little bit of information as well, I would recommend you spend a couple of days here because as I said, there is a whole lot to do. Um, it'll take you a fair while to get through the park and there is a number of campsites just like this beautiful one right outside the National Park and within the National Park as well that are free, which you can come and stay at. Uh, there's also, of course, caravan parks nearby. So there's heaps of options for you to come and stay um, and just chill out like this. You can have a campfire and go walk by the lake. This one here that I'm currently at is called Lake Lonsdale. So that said, I am about to jump straight into it. I'm gonna walk you through each individual spot, just tell you a little bit about it, give you an idea so you can pick and choose your favorites for when you come and visit here yourself. So spot number one is the Gulgan Manja Shelter Walk and I should mention quickly that this is right on the northern end of the park. Also these spots aren't in order from best to worst or anything like that, they're purely just in the order that I got around to visiting them as I was making my way just back down through the park. So this first walk is just a quick 1.5 kilometer return that leads to a protected rock art site. I really liked this one as it was super simple to access basically, plus you could still make out the rock paintings really well, which I liked. Apparently here the handprints are those of the younger members of the tribe, along with the emu tracks, which are pretty common in the area. You do also have a nice view of the area, which is pretty cool to start off with. Spot number two is the Hollow Mountain Walk and kicks off from the same car park. This one is a little longer to follow but really iconic for the Grampians and one I'd consider a must do on your visit. The track however I thought was a little more confusing than it needed to be as it basically branched off a few times with no signs but as far as I could figure these just led to some massive rock walls presumably for those out looking to do some actual rock climbing. Anyway, if you stick to the main path, you should be able to spot some arrows and you're good to go from there. To be honest, the path is pretty rocky past this point, so it's not exactly the most family friendly thing, but I promise the view is 100% worth it if you're interested. Um, this here is the little rock scramble section where I'd say definitely wear some good shoes. And then this is me actually making my way up, which is obviously by no means a rock climb, but it was still a bit of fun to get out and between the rocks. Now that we're up, check this out for a bit of perspective. The rock ledge behind me was absolutely massive. Plus, if you check out to the left-hand side of your screen at the moment, you should be able to spot the iconic Grampians photo cave. This is the one on the cover of all those Grampians tourist guides and brochures, and I wanna give you a quick look inside. Honestly, I was kind of disappointed that it didn't really go into much of a tunnel or anything, but still super cute, and at least worth stopping off to take a photo while you're here. Obviously, as you can see, the view back out of the cave is really cool. Luckily there are a few caves which you can squish yourself through if you are interested in that sort of thing, hence where it actually gets its name Hollow Mountain from. Now the actual summit isn't really that much further up but it's totally worth checking out for some great views of the surrounding farming area and of course the rest of the beautiful rocky landscape nearby. Moving on to stop number three, this one is Mount Zero. It's about another two kilometers to tick this one off and it's pretty similar view. In fact, it's literally just on the other side of the road, but I thought it was still worth doing for the opportunity to look back at Hollow Mountain where you've literally just come from and for a further look into the Grampians. 
here's the marker on top like usual it'll tell you what you're looking out at and then of course the surrounding view to bring us to the end of day one so day two I started from the Lake Lonsdale campground which I wanted to mention quickly because it's one of the better free campgrounds outside the national park but still close enough nearby so from there, spot four is another walk and just back inside the National Park, it's called Beehive Falls. I'm not really sure why the name, but it's definitely a nice track to check out. There's also longer walks that continue on from the falls if that's something that you're interested in and going a bit further. The falls themselves didn't have much water flowing whatsoever and definitely not a pool big enough to swim in, but they're still really pretty and made for a nice morning walk. I'd recommend this one particularly after rain if you do get the chance. Number five, this one is a quick drive away, but not far at all off the main touring route. Also, a lot of the more minor roads I should mention here are dirt, but nothing hectic and still easily accessible to two-wheel drive. So this one is another Aboriginal art site, and you will have to forgive me here, but I have no idea how to correctly pronounce the name of this one. It is, however, a quick 20 minute loop walk, and once again, a great example of a well-preserved rock painting site. You should be able to spot these pretty easily before looping back to the car park and National Park campground. Spot 6 was Mackenzie Falls and so much busier than the others. That said, there are a number of walks that you can do from here, so I did want to make sure to check this one out. This map probably explains the tracks a little better, but basically I wanted to get down to the bottom of the falls and then come back up and do the upper falls lookout. The area is really touristy and well signed. This here is the view over the falls on the way down, then a whole heap of stairs before the view back up. Honestly, the falls were great and had so much water flowing, but there were literally so many people crowded at the bottom that it kind of made it hard to just enjoy the experience. And for that reason, this one is getting across from me. In its defense, I did visit on a weekend, but still, what I would recommend is the upper lookout track. No stairs on this one, beautiful view, and literally no one there. Number seven, this one again is just down the road, but I thought I'd quickly throw it in. This spot is Lake Wartook, a recreational area for boating and fishing I would imagine, or just a cool spot for day visitors to come and check out. I throw it in purely because there are a lot of lakes in the area and it's super close by if you do want to see it along the way. Moving on once again, number 8 is the beautiful Reed Lookout. Pretty busy and touristy, but looking at the view I'm sure you can tell why, it's just an absolutely gorgeous spot this one. If you feel like it from here, you can also take a quick walk to the fire tower or the balconies lookout, but I just want to give you a quick look at the view. This one really was gorgeous. Number nine. While you're checking out lookouts, the Baroque lookout is also an absolute must do. This one is a little closer to the Halls Gap Township and quite literally overlooks it, as well as the Lake Belfield and a few of the other surrounding lakes and farms, which are absolutely stunning. Once again, I just want to show you the view because this one really was beautiful. Now, spot 10 is Halls Gap itself. And whilst it's not so much an activity like the walks and waterfalls I've been showing you, it is indeed a very cute little township and considered to be the ideal base location for staying and exploring the Grampians. It did, as I found out, also have some very friendly wildlife. This is literally in the main street, which is, I guess, always nice to see. But if you have got a caravan or you're looking for a cabin or somewhere to stay, this is probably the spot for you. Personally, I did head out to the plantation campground for the night. It did also have some gorgeous wildlife, but I found it was surprisingly nice and quiet at night, particularly being so close to town. But I would say this one is more ideal for those with tents, swags, or based around car camping. Back into it, I really needed to wrap things up being day three already, so I figured I'd just fit in as much as I could for the final day here. The first spot, or number 11, being Splitters Falls. Super cute short walk to this one, there is some nice scenery along the way but similarly to Beehive Falls which we'd visited the day before, it really just didn't have that much water flowing so I wouldn't necessarily be rushing out here to this one unless it had rained beforehand and then of course again I would recommend you come check it out. 
Stop 12, on the other hand, is once again a must-do and pretty popular being so close to Hallsgat. This one is the pinnacle lookout and walking track, which actually includes the Grand Canyon and Silent Street as well. The walk is pretty easy to follow with just a bit of rock hopping and is normally a loop track, however the Grand Canyon section is unfortunately closed at the minute, which was a bit of a shame, but still a very cool view that you could get through the fence. From there, the track follows up an amazing landscape, past a few little caves and waterfalls, then down into what's known as Silent Street, which is basically a narrow path blocked in by massive rock walls on either side. I honestly really loved this feature of the walk as it's just such a unique part of the landscape that you wouldn't really see that many other places. The actual pinnacle itself is equally impressive with awesome 360 degree views of the park and a great view of Hall's Gap. It was crazy windy up there, particularly on the lookout, so maybe not one for you if you don't love heights, otherwise there's plenty of awesome spots to take a breather and enjoy the view from the top of the ledge. Just out of town, number 13 is Lake Belfield. It's not particularly remarkable as far as lakes go, but seeing as we've been looking down on it from the surrounding lookouts, it seemed worthwhile visiting. There's a few benches and a nice damn wall if you'd like to check that out, but otherwise not a great deal else there. Number 14 is Silver Band Falls, and I have to say I did almost skip this one after the other falls being a bit dry, as well as the creek which you can see here. But it did turn out to be a nice little walk and had more water than I was actually expecting in the fall itself, so it was a nice little stop and cool spot to check out. I would recommend it if you've got a bit of extra time and you're staying closer to Halls Gap. Then finally, number 15 and my very last official spot to share with you guys is the beautiful Grampians Valley Lookout. This one is really headed down towards the southern end of the park and located on the Victoria Valley Road instead of the Grampians Road. It is unfortunately a little overgrown to walk to the top lookout point, but does give a great view of this part of the park and some of its mountain peaks that I just simply didn't get a chance to climb and fit into this video. With all of that done, I am just about to wrap up my Grampians tour for you guys. As you can see, we did fit in a fair bit to be honest, but there is just also like so much else that you can do out here in the National Park. I am still technically in the National Park, but I'm just about to drive on out of the southern end of it. So I figured I would wrap up here for you guys. I did quickly also want to give you um, a couple favorites as well. So I would say if you do have just a little bit of time in the National Park, I would do Reed's Lookout. That one was particularly good. I would do the Pinnacle, which I obviously did earlier this morning. And I would do Hollow Mountain because you've obviously got that iconic Grampians look to me um, with those caves sort of in the mountain. They would be my three highlights, but like 100% the rest of it as well. There's just so much here to do that I absolutely love that I think would be worth spending a couple days to see. So I did also quickly want to make a list for you guys. I'm going to pop it up on the screen now, so feel free to pause if you want. Uh, these are just things that I didn't actually get to do, but I know around <laughs> so there are other options you might want to do a bit of research on it yourself if you want to come and visit them. I'm talking about like waterfalls, lookouts, mountains, walking tracks, Aboriginal art sites, all of those sort of things. I should mention as well really quickly there is like a cultural centre and information centre if you want any of that information. Uh, they are at Halls Gap themselves so you can come and obviously get all that information when you come and stay. Additionally, if you pick up one of these, it's like just a Grampians touring guide that you can get from any information center. I found it not particularly helpful on the information that I've just given you guys on like what I think you should see and do in the park, but it will be really helpful on things like wine um, region touring and like where to stay in paid accommodation and all of those extra sort of things. I personally just like love doing the nature tour, love getting out and having a hike, looking at the lookouts, all of those really good things but that uh, little guidebook you can pick up for free at an information center as well if you want to do that. So I think that was just about all I had to tell you. It's all I can think of off the top of my head anyway. So if there's anything I've missed, I will pop it down in the description for you guys. Uh, that said, feel free as well to leave me any comments about any of the spots I missed or that I did show you. If you've got any questions, 
I'd love to um, hear your feedback there and get in touch with you about this spot because I have absolutely loved it. I think it's been an amazing park. This is just another little campground I've actually stopped off at right by the road, but um, as you can see, just another gorgeous spot. I'm not gonna stay here tonight though. I am gonna finish that drive. So I need to get myself on the road. Once again, guys, massive thank you for sticking with me. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I will catch you all again soon.